This morning we hear the story of Jesus' baptism along with many others in the River Jordan. Many of us can't remember our own baptism except for perhaps a few of us who were baptized either as older children or as adults. But if we can't remember our own baptism, perhaps we have been told the story of that day. Do you remember baptism stories in your family? My niece, who is also my goddaughter, was fussing and crying so hard at her baptism that I was doing everything I could, kind of bouncing her up and down, snuggling her, trying to help hold the pacifier in her mouth. She was fussing while her twin sister was being baptized. And it went, when it came time for her turn, that sweet little six-month-old baby caught with her little finger the loop at the pacifier and flung it high up into the air, <laughs> and it dropped down right into the holy water. <laughs> I laughed as I handed her off to my father, her grandfather, to be baptized. I assisted a few years ago at the baptism of a young teen in Canuga Lake. It was in early October, so it was quite chilly. Um, and so there were lots of towels after the baptism, trying to dry them off and warm them up. And even a hot fire burning in the fireplace down at the Lake Pavilion. I myself was baptized in the Episcopal Church in Geneva, Switzerland, not far from where I was born. I never actually knew the community that pledged to support me in my life and faith, but I trust that they held me in prayer and continue to, to do so to this day. We all have our own baptismal stories, some of them colorful, like my niece Emily, and some quiet and beautiful. The common thread in these stories is the element of water. Water, which is the main element of our physical being. Water, the essential element for our survival. Water, which cleanses and nourishes and renews. Jesus came to be baptized in the River Jordan. John, his cousin, had been with the people there for quite a while. And he was talking to them about the kingdom of God coming near. And John called the people to repent. Metanoia, to change their minds, to change their hearts, to change their way of being, because the kingdom of God is drawing near. Turn your whole selves towards God, is what John is calling the people to do. There are several times throughout the course of the year where we as a community recall our own baptism. Frequently, we are celebrating the baptism of new members into our community, and sometimes, as today, we are renewing our own baptismal vows. But we do it at least five times throughout the year, at the Easter Vigil, on the Feast of Pentecost, on the Feast of the Transfiguration, on All Saints Sunday, and today, the Baptism of our Lord. We renew the vows that were made on our behalf or the vows we made ourselves, and we give voice to the covenant that we have committed ourselves to, reminding ourselves what it is to be the people of God, to walk together in this life 
of faith. We are reminded to follow the apostles' teaching in the breaking of bread and in the prayers. And we remember to seek and serve Christ in all persons and to strive for justice and the dignity of every human being. And we promise, once again, to love one another as Christ loved us. It is hard now in our current day, just as it was years and years ago, to live fully into this covenant. There are so many verbal and nonverbal communications that we receive throughout the day telling us whose dignity to recognize and whose to deny, which justice to advocate for and which to remain silent about, who reflects the image of the divine and in whom the image of the divine is hidden. Who is acceptable to break bread with? And who should not be at the table? We know intellectually, perhaps even instinctively, that being made in the image of God, being part of the body of Christ, means that all are welcome. All are our neighbors. And the dignity of each should be equally valued. And yet, this is not how we have ordered our society, nor our lives. This covenant with God that we have committed ourselves to requires devotion and intention of striving for a radical way of being in this world. And so as God's children, we need these rhythms of recommitting ourselves and our community to working towards realizing the beloved community of God that we were created to be. We need to be reminded throughout the year of these covenantal promises. And in the renewal of our vows, we also recall that our baptism is into the body of Christ. This same Christ upon whom the Spirit of God descended after the waters of baptism and the voice from heaven proclaimed, This is my Son, my child, my beloved, in whom I delight, in whom I am well pleased. As members of the body of Christ, we too hear these words and should hear that we too are beloved. This is my child, my beloved, in whom God is well pleased. We don't frequently pay close attention to the prayers that we pray for the baptismal candidates, but these prayers are also words of love and encouragement as we journey through this life of faith. Listen to what we as a community pray for and let these words wash over you as prayer for yourselves on your own faith journey. Deliver your beloved child from the way of sin and death. Open their hearts 
to your grace and truth. Fill them with your holy and life-giving spirit. Keep them in faith and communion of your holy church. Teach them to love others in the power of the Spirit. Send them into the world in witness to your love. Bring them to the fullness of your peace and glory. I invite you to consider what you need this day to support you so that you will trust that these are the prayers of this community for you. We hear the words of God offered to the people of God, the words that echo down through Isaiah and Matthew, through communities of God's people who came before through this community here today, to God's children in this sanctuary. Hear these words of benediction and identity, naming each of you this day. You are my chosen, in whom my soul delights. You are my child, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. God's love shines forth in and through each and every one of you, extending beyond these walls, beyond this community, and stretching far out into the world. Trust and nurture the core of you that knows yourself as beloved, as a being in whom God's soul delights. That is the light, the love, and the truth that our world needs to know and see. That is the light and love and truth that will help shine forth the way to a world that delights in the dignity of all and cherishes the sanctity of our collective humanity. You are my chosen, in whom my soul delights, says the Eternal One. You are my child, beloved. Amen.